Hey guys, Giants Beat reporter Zach Rosenblatt here from NJ Advanced Media, and this is your latest update powered by the Talk is Cheap podcast. The Giants are 3-7 and seven after winning their second straight game, beating the rival Philadelphia Eagles 27-17 to in Week 10. The Giants never trailed in the game, and now all of a sudden there's a legitimate path to the Giants winning the NFC East title. Heading into their bye week, the Giants have closed in on those first place Eagles, who currently sit at 3-5-1. and one. Washington and the Cowboys are both behind them at 2-7. and seven. The Giants don't play again until November 29th against the Cincinnati Bengals, a game that will be crucial for their chances of winning the division. The Giants only have one more division game left, and that's in Week 17 against the Cowboys. For the second straight week, quarterback Daniel Jones did not turn the ball over. It's the first time in his career that he didn't turn it over in two straight games, and by most accounts, it was the best game of the season for him, even if it doesn't necessarily show up on the box score. He didn't throw a touchdown pass, but he did complete 21 of 28 passes for 244 yards, in addition to running for 64 yards and a touchdown. He's already the Giants' all-time leading QB rusher in a single season with 384 yards, and his ability as a dual threat has worked wonders for the offense. Overall, Pro Football Focus has him graded as the third-best quarterback in the NFL for Week 10. Giants general manager Dave Gettleman is still on the hot seat after a couple rough seasons to start his tenure, but it's less apparent now whether he'll get fired after the season or not. If the Giants keep playing well, he could survive. He's easily had his best year as the general manager, but that's not really saying much. Still, Gettleman deserves particular credit for signing cornerback James Bradbury as a free agent. He's been a dominant shutdown corner and leads the NFL in pass breakups. He could be headed for an all-pro selection. Other additions that worked out so far include linebacker Blake Martinez, safety Logan Ryan, kicker Graham Gano, and rookies like Matt Parrott, Darnay Holmes, and linebacker Tay Crowder. Graham Gano tested positive for COVID-19 on Tuesday, putting a status for the Giants' game against the Bengals in Week 12 in doubt. The positive test coming during the bye week is helpful, but the players who test positive are required to quarantine for 10 days, along with getting multiple negative tests in a row and without exhibiting symptoms before being allowed to return to the team. If all goes well, that would put Gano in line to return a few days before the Bengals game. If not, the Giants signed practice squad kicker slash punter Ryan Santoso to the active roster as a precaution. Santoso hasn't kicked any field goals in the NFL, but he has experience on kickoffs from his time with the Titans. The 3-7 and seven Giants are off this week, but will return on November 29th with a game against the Bengals in Cincinnati. For all the latest Giants news, turn to the sports section of NJ.com and download the Talk is Cheap podcast wherever podcasts are available. The party has started and your invite is still waiting. I'm talking about the Candy Crush Candy Party, of course. Don't miss the three weeks of candy celebrations with Candy Crush Saga. There are loads of fun challenges and some sweet, sweet rewards if you top the leaderboards, like Unlimited Lives. Then on November 20th, finish it with a bang with a gift of unlimited color bombs for 24 hours. Play Candy Crush Saga now to join in the candy celebrations. Download it from the App Store, Google Play, or Windows Store for free. Terms and conditions apply.